everybody, I'm Catherine of Ghana Made and welcome to another episode of Find Your Way Back. On today's episode, we have an incredible guest, filmmaker Kukwa Ishan. Hi Kukwa. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. So I can't wait to find out all about you. So mm. let's dive right into it. So can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Ah, about myself. <laughs> Uh, my name is Kukwe Shen. I am a filmmaker, film director. I was born and raised in Ghana up until middle school. I went to high school, college, so I guess like half of my life in Columbus, Ohio. I do quite a number of things, but above all, I am an African woman. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. So yeah. you said you spent half of your life in Ohio. Yeah. What was that experience like? So, um, I was younger, I went to high school, that was, you know, the African booty scratcher mm -hmm. era, <laughs> where it wasn't cool to be African right. um, when I was in high school. So that was really hard. Also to transition um, from Ghana, you know, the mentality, you know, um, just growing up in Ghana, moving to Ohio, it wasn't easy, but yeah. It was it, it was quite it was hard. It was hard. But I got through it. You got through it. I did. <laughs> and I look did. at where you are now and we yeah. will also dive into that. So when yeah. did you move to Ghana and what was that transition like for you? You know what's funny? I feel like I'm one of those people that I never really made the decision that I'm moving. Mm. It kinda just happened. Right. Um, but for me it was a calling coming back to Ghana. So I came back to Ghana in 2017, that was the first time I came back since I left to Ohio. And I think I spent about two months and I just knew, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the place I was supposed to be. The skies were more blue, mm -hmm. the grass was more green, everything was just, I just felt so connected to, you know, to like I've been plugged in the source, like I've been charged, it was just. It was time. It, yeah, it was time and I was, it, everything inside of me just, knew that I had to come back to Ghana mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for what I needed to do and what I needed to be. Amazing. Yeah. Now you have done some incredible work. Your catalogue <laughs> is literally incredible and we will dive Thank right you. into that. But how did you get into the filmmaking and directing space? How did that happen for you? Well, ever since I was young, um, before I was a filmmaker, I've, always, I've been a writer since I was young. I would always write down my emotions as, as a young girl. I remember, you know, I'm upset today, I had a bad day, mm -hmm. or today was a good day because uncle blah, 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 gave me, you know, calipo, mm -hmm. or, you know, something so silly. And eventually that grew into poetry. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I got to the point in my life where I was surrounded by a bunch of creatives, filmmakers, and I wanted so badly to turn my poems, because it was in my diary. No one gets to see it or read it, just me, into film. So I took the step, and then that's how my filmmaking career began. Wow, so how long ago was that? Oh my gosh, <laughs> the, my first professional mm -hmm. well done <laughs> film was made in 2018 okay 2018 wow. mm -hmm. that was yeah that, that was, was when first. i made yeah that was wow. the first so since then what has been a highlight of your career so far or a couple of highlights because yeah. i know there, there must be many <laughs> um I am thankful that, like you said, there's been a couple of highlights for my career, but what really shot my career um, since 2018 was my um, sh short film I, um, I did in 2019, mm -hmm. Artists Act of Love. Um, it did really well in the film, film industry. It won the best visual effect at the Worldwide Women's Film Festival. Wow. It won about over 20, international film festivals worldwide and I think that's really what put um, my name in spaces in people's minds and people's head um, so that was yeah I I'm so in love with that moment because that really showed me 
what I can do and my power and, and your capabilities. Yeah, and what it means to believe in yourself and you know to to create something so authentic, so beautiful that people can resonate with. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's I think has been one of the most beautiful moments of my life. Amazing. That film. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So being a woman and a film director in Ghana, yeah. how has that been like for you? What oh. is that like? <laughs> Oh my goodness, being a woman, being young, mm -hmm. um, and the boss, <laughs> it hasn't been easy. Most people I work with are men and mm -hmm. older, older men. Okay. Um, they've been in the industry many, many years. Most of them have been to, you know, NAFTI, they have mm -hmm. degrees, they've, you know, studied film, one, you know, they used to edit in the deck room mm -hmm. with, you know, for mm -hmm. old equipment. So I think that it's really not easy um, to, I guess, you know, this young girl comes out of nowhere and, you know, has the project and the money to like hire people, bring right. people together to mm -hmm. tell stories. Um, I think eventually it was like really, really hard. Um, but as time went on, I, I found my tribe, mm -hmm. my team, the people that will understand where people that will love my mind, respect me, and, and be on this journey with me. So I'm thankful, but it's, it's definitely not easy. It's not easy at it's all. Not, it's so not. how did you put yourself out there? Did you already have family and friends back home that were willing to put your name out there as well? Or did you, you know, sort of go around and do all the work? How did that happen? <sighs> Listen, <laughs> when I first moved to Ghana, uh, well, I didn't, like, I didn't really move, but when I first came Keep in that, 2018, yeah. I didn't know I was going to go back. Um, I had, whew, I had like $8,000 in my bank account mm. and lots of joy. Mm. That's the only thing I carried. And I came, I didn't know anyone. And yeah, I didn't really know anyone that could um, help me or push my name out there or that could like, you know, I mean, my mom supports me, but she was like, I don't understand this thing you want to do, filmmaker, like, why can't you just go to, you know, mm -hmm. she's like, oh, you can be a nurse, mm -hmm. or like a lawyer. Typical, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, mom, no, I, I'm, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a storyteller, mm -hmm. not even, you know, like above all, but I don't know, I think, I think it was just God's grace, just, you know, orchestrating mm -hmm. and connecting all the dots um, for me to be where I am today. Wow, yeah. that is just so touching, honestly, <laughs> it really is. So yeah. what has been some of the challenges as you were moving or as you were trying to set up your business over in Ghana? What challenges did you face? If I would be very honest, at the time that I set up my business, Shoot Your Reality, mm -hmm. that was the time where my film, A Detective Love, um, it was doing so well in the festivals, and I met my big sis, Amakea Babuse. And we worked on a project together, um, and it went really, really well. It was like one of, you know, the first big check mm -hmm. where I was like really excited. And since we worked on that project, there was so many doors that opened after that. So I don't even, I can't even say if I like struggled to like set it up, mm -hmm. um, just because like things happen so fast. Right. And before I, you know it, it yeah, was I just literally kind of blinked, and it was like, oh. Yeah, we, you know, I own a production company with Ama and Shoot Your Reality. We're women's led and we're doing so well. And, you know, I'm now that I'm saying it out loud. I'm like, wow, I'm very thankful for this, this journey. Yeah. You've done amazing things. <laughs> Let's go back to 2021. Yes. I'm sure 2021 was a jam-packed <laughs> year for you, full of exciting projects. Yeah. And there's one particular project that I want to talk about. Yeah. That is Big Wiz's video for <laughs> Big Mood. How did you land that gig and what was it like working with him? Okay, first of all, um, I know people always be like, wait, how did you like, you know, get into this whole thing? How did you meet Wiz? Again, the journey has always been orchestrated. The dot has always been connected by the most high. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I can say. But, but secondly, it was also because of my film, I Just Like the Love. Okay. Um, I met Jada mm -hmm. and we had lunch, we had a conversation, you know, we followed each other on social media. 
and then she saw my work and she fell in love with it. She was like, oh, she, like, I think I put like a little piece of our dissective love um, on my Instagram. I think it was out on, yeah, it was out on TV and I was like, oh, you, everyone can watch it now, blah, blah, mm. blah. And she had me send her the full link and I think she sent it over to Wiz and Wiz fell in love with it. And then they're like, oh, come to the house. We want to have lunch. And then I went over and it was just, it was just beautiful connection with Wiz. Like, um, yeah, it was, it was just, it was orchestrated. Amazing orchestrator. I think that's been yes. the key word <laughs> that I'm going to take yes. away from this orchestrated. <laughs> Following on from that, what advice would you give to someone in the diaspora with big dreams like yourself who wants to move back but they're not sure how to maneuver? What would you say to them? I would, I've been saying this for some time and I really believe it. There is a certain grace on this continent, mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. but you can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm if it's on your heart and it's i mean moving back is the calling not everyone can do it not all of us can move back right only some of us can move back and even the people that do move back only some of us can make an impact and stay, right yeah. it's yeah only some of us can stay mm -hmm. only some of us can you know change the narrative mm -hmm. with what um we have but i would say though there is a calling on this african continent that you can't get anywhere else if i tried to do this in america i would have failed mm -hmm. it wouldn't have it, 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 it won't work because mm -hmm. that's not where my the grace is you know yeah. is at mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so if you want to move back you're never really gonna be like oh yay i'm ready you know i have 50k now i can move back mm -hmm. you know get an apartment pay for two years it's never gonna happen i think just make that bold step because no glory comes without sacrifice mm -hmm. and if you're scared to do something that's how you know that that thing can can be so great every time you're scared to do something it's a sign there's a that reason. there's greatness yes, there's greatness yes, ahead behind of you. that yes yes so that's like my advice to take the bold step to take the bold step mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're never gonna feel comfortable or right. you're never gonna be like i'm ready everything is you know smooth let's no mm -hmm. it's it's not gonna happen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just come home you know explore experience and just you know within yourself mm -hmm. just listen to God's voice. Right. You know if you're supposed to stay, mm -hmm. what you're supposed to mm -hmm. do. If not, just reconnect with the continent mm -hmm. and take that grace back with you. Okay. So for somebody who wants to take the bold step and come back to Ghana and spread their wings, what would you say? Would you advise them to come for a while and go back or just to come and you know, make that move? Yeah, I think everyone's journey is different. Everyone's calling is different. Like I said, we all can't come back. I don't even know if there's space for mm -hmm. I think there's space for all of yeah. us but it's just I don't see all of us you know yeah. coming, right, but right. Um, I think you just really have to within yourself actually how badly do you need this mm -hmm. right if you and, and you know people that have the calling they know mm -hmm. you, you you can tell mm -hmm. when you have the calling to come back home mm -hmm. and if you're you're one of those people that have the calling, then nothing can I, stop you. Nothing yeah. can stop you. I, can, I can assure you, you need to come back home, mm. whether it's for a Coachella or one week or two weeks or whether it's for like you know, a festival or whatever the case is, you just need to make that bold step and come back and find out for yourself. Because mm -hmm. I know people that you know have only come to Ghana for three days, one week, and it's been like, a, there's, there's been a shift in their life. Mm. There's like this spiritual change mm. because you're connected you know, to the continent, to the source, mm -hmm. something so much greater than all of us. And it's, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would advise people yeah. just to take that step yeah. and believe. Yeah. If you feel it, come back home. If There's space, it. if you feel it. Yes. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so I remember I saw you working at Afrochella. Yeah. Really quickly, what was that experience like? How was the day like for you? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I think the first day of Afrochella, it was like a 16 plus hour shift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I couldn't feel my legs. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you survived. But, yeah, I survived. I survived. Um, it, was, it was really, I felt really proud um, being a woman, um, directing, you know, this um, major thing for this huge festival, um, you know, being on stage to shoot and just knowing that 
the people that have trusted my ideas mm -hmm. and trusted me with, you know, um, my storytelling, my creativity to be there um, to showcase, you know, Ghana and Africa to the world. It, yeah, it was it was a be beautiful experience mm -hmm. um, to to be working. It's phenomenal. Uh, you should honestly be so proud yeah. of yourself. Yeah, honestly, you so I know much. that I am. Do thank you have you. any final words? Um, final words. Well, if you give me this opportunity, maybe we might not end the show. <laughs> <laughs> But I think my final words will be like, as black people, we are so powerful. The power and the magic inside of us that we, we, we hold, it's, it's nothing to joke about. Mm -hmm. And I wish that when I was younger, someone would have told me that. Mm -hmm. I, would, oh, I could have recognized it sooner. Because this is like the best version of myself, but it's also just the beginning. So I'm like, it's exciting, you mm -hmm. know? But that's only because I've been able to recognize the power in which I hold. Mm -hmm. And I hope that anyone watching this, you know, in the diaspora, any young girl, any, you know, black girl that sees me can also understand that everybody has power in them that the world needs. And you just need to bring it out. What an yeah. amazing ending. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming with your grace, your story. You. It's been amazing having you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having no me. No problem. Yeah. Thank you for watching this episode of Find Your Way Back. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. in Africa, Asia. Let's light it up!